And it was um, three people I knew very well all went ill after having the booster. All three of them only had the booster, otherwise they couldn't travel. This, this, was, the, this was the madness. Why would did the government insist you had to travel when they, they knew at the time we now know Fauci knew very, very early on that the vaccine did not prevent transmission. Yet he insisted all school children had it to look after other people. It was all madness. The great, great psychosis uh, uh, it, it was, was going on here. Possibly worse, but you know, that's the uh, that's the um, kind version. The kindest way to put it. Yeah. Put it. But uh, to me, uh, this was. Uh, strongly suggested it was perturbating, i.e. upsetting an immune response that was controlling the cancer where the T-cell is dominant. The T-cell is dominant and the vaccine should have been T-cell dominant. They weren't. They induced T-cell responses, but purely by chance. It, was, uh, it wasn't by design. And they upset that T-cell uh, response, which is why the cancers escaped. And remember, they were under control because all these people had been... It's sort of cured by immunotherapy long before, as I said, it became popular and was, was accepted. So I knew then it was perturbating. It was like my model where the, the third and fourth vaccine caused more harm and allowed underlying diseases to, to, to take off. And you know, that's what other people were seeing. And so we were, we were asked to you know, prove it. Well, I didn't have the resources to prove it, but it didn't take very long before other people were saying that the T-cell response is suppressed or exhausted. I like that word that was used. It said the T-cells are exhausted after the third uh, shot, the, the first booster, and more exhausted even when you have the fourth and fifth. So why on earth are we still bullying? Even my own practice is bullying us to go and get a spring booster to just set you right for the summer. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Well, it's worse than unbelievable now, given that what we know now, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, beyond, it's beyond professional negligence now. It's just... And very good people, um, immunologists who've followed uh, these patients, they've noticed that the T-cell suppression, the virtual wipeout, is even worse in cancer patients. And then they wonder why these cancer patients are becoming turbo cancer patients because they've got no control left. And so now we know there's many other reasons. The other paper, which I thought was really, really important, was one just looking at the immunoglobulin switches. So IgG1 and 3, these are the ones that neutralize and conduce a, a complement for cell killing, the, for, the, for the B cell activity, what have you. But... After the booster, people were saying they were monitoring this because they were looking for neutralizing antibodies, cross-reactive, and they suddenly said, hey, wait a minute, there's been an IgG switch. They've switched to class 4. Now, class 4 uh, is what you get when you tolerize. So you tell the immune system, and this is what you want in kidney transplants, liver transplants, you put you program the system through various medications, etc., to induce IgG class 4 so it tolerizes, it doesn't reject. So we were using the booster vaccines to tolerize patients' cancer so they wouldn't reject them. So those are two main reasons why they pop out. So, so what was happening in the past was the T-cells... These are the T lymphocytes, the, mm. the cells that can actually destroy cancer cells, mm. dropping noxious chemicals on them and killing mm. them in, in, in a wonderful way. They, they were doing this job, mm. but then the vaccine was suppressing that T cell response. Therefore, there was nothing left to keep the cancer down. So there's nothing to keep the cancer down. It just takes off. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's by very simple interpretation in a nutshell. They obviously... The amazing thing about the uh, immune system, it's unbelievably complex. So you have to simplify it in order to understand it. The T-cell responses are slightly more complex than just the T-cell because there's the one 
that's trained and recognise the cancers and keep it under control. But there's the innate immune system, which is uh, the front line attack. And they will attack anything that doesn't look quite right. And actually, we think some of these, a thing called gamma delta T cells, are probably the most important of the lot. But anyhow, it looks like the vaccines are suppressing all, all of these uh, oh. frontline aspects of the immune system. Mm. So you don't have to look any further, really, to see you know, what on earth is causing this. But as we now know, others are coming up with many other uh, resons, etc., of how the boosters could actually stimulate and drive the cancer, let alone just take the brakes off, as it were. Yeah. So, so this this switch in the IgG. So these IgGs are the immunoglobulins. These are the immune proteins mm. made by the B lymphocytes, mm. and they're supposed to be fighting infection. Mm. With repeated exposure, I suppose you get much the same. This is why we're not all allergic to peanuts and things like that. We want to tolerate these things. Mm. Or, or, or your, your example of a, of a kidney transplant, where we want to tolerate it, where you want to promote these I immunoglobulin uh, type fours, which actually reduce the immune system. And therefore, they are reducing the immunosurveillance of cancers and, ironically, the immunosurveillance of viruses as well. Exactly. And now this is another reason that people have noted to me, and, you know, this is all again being published um, by several sources, is that people who get the boosters, they seem to uh, go down with COVID and other infections uh, remarkably uh, quickly and more so than they ever did before. And one which has occurred to me walking around my Enveron social club, sports club, etc., a number of people who, who basically said, you know, I was perfectly well till I had that booster, and I've had, it's been bloody awful. I've had shingles ever since. Well, we now know that is a major thing, and it's the same thing. It's upset the finely tuned immune regulation of all these viruses. So again, shingles, vi vi ongoing viral infection, mm. um, normally kept down by uh, mm. the immune system and so well recognised in all aspects of healthcare that any time someone's immunosuppressed, mm. the shingles can come out. It's, mm. it's, just, it's just classic, isn't it? Yeah. That can happen. It's absolutely classic. So that, that alone by itself says the booster is immune suppressing these people because they're coming out with new infections, often called new COVID or some other virus, and sometimes just very, very unwell with all sorts of things, including shingles and COVID, and autoimmune diseases of all descriptions. I mean, people have described to me after getting the booster the most bizarre autoimmune conditions, which I have to think very hard which one they're most like that I've been taught and you know, fits into a box, but they're clearly autoimmune-driven uh, conditions, which we know when you take the, uh, the interfere with the immune system, you do start to get unwanted responses because they're normally suppressed and controlled by the T-cell police, as I would call it. Yeah, <laughs> and it could be that we're seeing new uh, pathological histo histologies, really, you know, uh, mm. autoimmune reactions against tissues which... We didn't really see in the traditional autoimmune disease mm. profile boxes, as you say, mm. but but now now it's kind of a open open season. Mm. And the other thing that's really concerning, I've had a lot of people writing in, and and uh, a tragic case from my own personal uh, experience, uh, leukemia. Um, do do you feel there's more leukemia in young people around than there has been in the previous years? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, after I noticed the melanoma in the, my clinic, I noticed uh, people uh, not at the hospital initially, in fact, even my friends and family, had been diagnosed with uh, a, a leukaemia or a uh, lymphoma after the boosters. And I then went to another place where I knew people that worked there, and uh, uh, I just said to someone, you know, by the way, you know, how, how are you? I haven't seen you for a while. And they said, oh, I've uh, come up in all sorts of lumps. And, uh, I, you know, I, they don't know exactly what it is, but they think it's a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and they're investigating. And I said, this is one of the stupidest things that 
an oncologist could possibly say that. And I said, God, that's a shot. I wonder what on earth caused that. You know, I don't know why I said it. And this person said, oh, my oncologist told me it's, uh, it's entirely due to the booster vaccine. They're seeing loads of them. And she said, I already know three other people in my circle who've had the uh, lymphoma or leukemia since their boosters. Now, these are major alerts. And they were all reported to the MHRA and, and the usual suspects. Get no reply. I mean, this, this is gross dereliction of duty yeah. on a grand scale. You know, I've mentioned before, when you realise that the 1970 flu in America, uh, they rolled a vaccine out because it was killing people in their 20s and 30s and their soldiers. It was a real national emergency. And people said, I think there's some increase in Gillian Barry going on, this ascending paralysis that occurs with, with uh, has been noted with other vaccines. But the incidents went up. The FDA, which is staffed by sensible people then, said, if that's the case, we better look into it. And they looked into it and they said, my God, it's true. And then they said, has the virus changed, as all viruses do? Ah, oh, nobody's dying of it anymore. Kill it. And that's what we should have done with the COVID vaccine two years ago. We should have killed it. There was more than enough evidence. But they That's sat right. by, I see no ships, nothing to see here, go away. It's unbelievable. So leukemia is a pretty, can be a pretty frightening disease, uh, disease of the white blood cells, um, cancer of the white blood cells. And, and lymphoma, the other, other one you mentioned, uh, lymph tumours developing from, from the lymphocytes. Yeah. Well, can, does it does, do, do leukemia and lymphoma present in similar ways? Well, it, the majority, over 90% of these are B-cell uh, lymphocyte-driven diseases. And why would they appear after a uh, third totally unnecessary booster? It's because that booster is designed to flog a dying horse, i.e. the B-cells, and give them extra growth factors to produce more antibodies. So what they're doing is they're releasing extra stimulating factors and also having removed the T-cell response uh, because a lot of leukemias, lymphomas, they basically are seen in uh, immunodeficiency status. In fact, the a supreme example was one of my other lives was HIV. You know, we actually saw uh, all these lymphomas pop up because the T-cell response had been destroyed by HIV. So uh, this is it's another example.